able to come today. Okay, so there we are. Perfect. Super fans are our stakeholders, and honestly, they're the most important kind. I don't care whether you're business to business, business to consumer, your stakeholders are your fans, your customers, your clients, and they're the most important kind, and that's what we're going to be focused on. They, these are the ones that invest the time, money, and the most important thing that they invest in you is emotion. We all know that buying decisions are made in an emotional state. Almost all of them are. So it's really important to hit those emotions and get people connected to you in that way. And that is what a super fan is. We're going to today focus on some of the experiences that you can have or create for people to become super fans. Um, and this is far more important than thinking about getting more traffic on your social media or more followers, or if on you, you're on YouTube, more subscribers, more views. These are the kind of things that we're obsessed with today. And quite honestly, if you have someone taking care of social media for you, they're also probably very focused on how many likes do we have, how many people are commenting, which is a good thing. But we're going to talk about today how you can stop stressing about that and focus on the smaller part of this, all the more time consuming and creating super fans and not just followers. So one of the key things that I like to talk about or just make sure that I share with people is that we all got into business, whatever business we have or created we really wanted to do something in this world. I mean, it's why we create businesses and start them and work for ourselves and be entrepreneurs. We want to create change. And it doesn't matter what product or service you have. Somewhere in the midst of that, it came out of this desire. And that's why entrepreneurs are so great together because we all think the same way and we have that desire and need. But what I want to remind us today is that we don't have to change the entire world. That's not what we're focused on. We're focusing on changing someone's day. And that's where it starts in those micro moments of just what you're going to do to change someone's day. Not life, right? Not, not an entire year. And we want to think big like that too. But when we focus on how do I change someone's day, that's where we really start to get momentum and build our super fan base. So, I'm going to practice what I preach some here today, and I'm going to ask you guys, if you will, and that kind of resonates with you and you think it would resonate with not only your audience, but maybe other friends that you have, share it and tag us um, on social media. Our tag is RRSBDC. We're on Instagram and Facebook. Um, those are where we're most active and stay up to date. And if you want to share that with us and for us, that would be incredible. So let's talk back to this notion of like followers, shares, you know, we, we all have thought about and think about often SEO, which is search engine optimization. And people often ask, how do I get more followers? How do I get people to share my content? And what do I do about SEO? And the number one thing, people get frustrated with me when they're sitting across the desk and I'll say, add more value and they'll roll their eyes. <laughs> but it's the truth. We do want more followers and shares and more if we have brick and mortar, we want more people in our stores. And so to do that, you have to add more value. And I'm going to share some, some experiences with you today and take you along on our journey at the Small Business Development Center. We've been around for a very long time in the Roanoke region, but a lot of people don't know about us. And quite frankly, a lot of the feedback that I get is, if I go to your website or, or, you know, someone tells me about you, I don't really see anything. It's kind of out, outdated. And I push back on a little bit. It's not outdated. We're very good about keeping up our content and making sure that everyone's trained and we're at the top of our field. But they do have a point. And one of the things that we've been doing over the last year is really starting to adjust and shift and change the way that we work with our clients and work with you, our audience. 
And part of that is adding more value. And I recently had this conversation. Someone says, you guys have great social media content recently, like in the last six months or so. I'm like, I know, but we're still, we're in the very beginning stages of the process that I'm going to teach you today. We're implementing it and maybe you can follow along with us and watch what we do. We're in the very beginning stages and we know that it's going to take a long period of time. And I can't wait to share some of those examples with you, but let's get into um, the pyramid, the marketing pyramid. You've probably seen lots of graphics around the pyramid and I didn't want to copy somebody else's stuff. So I just made my own little graphic here um, that's just super visual and easy to understand. The old marketing funnel or what I'm considering the old marketing funnel is the wide part is at the top and you want to bring in all the traffic, like how many people can I get in front of? And this is the incredible important part of the marketing process. The more people I get in, the more subscribers, followers, you know, people that are like following along with you, you get. And then just a little bit down from under that and a little bit less are people that actually visit your website or your sales page or visit your store. And then under that is someone who actually makes a purchase from you. And so wide at the top, lots of traffic coming in, and then it gets narrow at the bottom because you got to have a ton of traffic to get that final sell. And that's the old marketing funnel. Although it can be very effective for many businesses, today what I want to focus on is flipping that upside down and learning a new way and a more connected way to build our audiences and customer bases and really make them raving fans and super fans. So the new model that I'm suggesting is turning that upside down so the narrow part is at the top. And these are your casual customers or your casual audience. I'm gonna relate the words interchangeably today because a lot of you are thinking about online marketing, so social media, and a lot of others are thinking, about, I just need people in my doors. So we're gonna, it works both ways. And so if you hear me exchange those words, they really mean the same thing. But at the top, we're talking about these casual people. These are people who are just casually, maybe they heard about you and they just kind of checked out a post on your, Facebook or Instagram page, or maybe they're like walking downtown and they like just kind of peeked in your store, didn't buy anything. They're just kind of checking you out. Those are your casual people and they're incredibly important, but we want, we need that number to be like small, right? We want to bring them in at that stage because it's easier to manage and handle. I can have a connection with all those casual people, right? Cause it's not this huge amount. Next in the pyramid are what we consider active customers or an active audience. And these are people that are engaging with you. So they're not only just following along on social media, they're not just like zipping through your, your store or, or you know, stopping at a restaurant and grabbing a menu, right? Those are kind of some active thing or some casual things, but they're, they're taking action. They're talking to you, they're engaging with you, they're sharing a post. Um, they're telling a friend about you. They're starting to become more active and more engaged and more like seeing more of your stuff. And then the, the other piece or kind of the next wider funnel that we want to build and kind of trickle up and build into is a connected audience or customer base. And these folks are super connected to you. We're going to talk a little bit later about what that means. But these are the folks that you are just really engaged with and connected and, and they're your fans. But then we can go even a step further to take that group and turn them into what we're going to call super fans. And so we're going to talk more about that later. I don't want to spend a little too much time on this slide, but I want you to visually see the old versus what I'm suggesting the new. Okay, so when we're building, we're not funneling. And so you guys, a lot of you guys who were on a little bit early saw this quote, and it's people don't become super fans the moment that they find you. It doesn't matter how awesome you are. Um, it doesn't matter how great your product or service is. The moment they find you isn't when they become a super fan. It is a building process. But they become fans because of the magical moments that you create for them over time. It takes time. And there are moments that you create. And so this is super important for people to understand. If you guys wanna share this, we love it. Um, and tag us and we'll make sure that we share that too so that we can get the word out about your business. 
Okay, so let's talk about the first stage of this. And for a moment, I wanna pause. When I was putting together this workshop from materials that I have that I'm pretty passionate about, and there's lots of stuff out there on super fans um, or raving fans, it's lots of different verbiage that describe it. I realize that I'm trying to cram way too much into this hour long workshop. And what's really important for me as a presenter and a trainer is for you to walk away with some things that you can do and feel good about and not be overwhelmed. And I realized very quickly that today was gonna to be overwhelming if I went through the whole spill. So I wanna take a moment here to let you know that we're actually gonna go through the very first um, kind of stage of this casual to active, because I think for a lot of you folks who are registered, this is probably where you're starting to build. Not quite at that middle stage, although you do have some people there. I think it's really important to kind of go back to this casual to active and really focus on it. And I've got um, five to do's for you to take away today, which I feel like is a lot, but I want you to take away and do them. And then I'm hoping you don't mind. I'm going to split this into a second workshop and we're going to do it next Wednesday. And I'll share the link with you here um, shortly. Actually, let me see if I can share it right now. I can't quite do that yet, but I will at the end so that you can register for that. Um, you don't have to go through the long process like you did for this one. You'll just be able to quickly register. And if you're not able to make next Wednesday at noon, I'm going to send you the presentation so that you can go on with the next five. Um, actually, I think there's seven to do's in the next one. So we're going to keep building on it. Um, and then I have a little drip email series for you too. So we're going to take this further than just today's hour because I think it's going to be far more beneficial. But this first part I'm really super excited about. If you guys have a Facebook page, I would love it if somehow on your screen, I don't know where you're joining me today, if you're on a phone or a computer, um, or a tablet, but if you could open up your business Facebook page, that would be awesome. I'm actually going to switch my share um, here for just a moment, and I'm going to show you our business page because I want to take you through this super easy process. Just a second. Give you guys a minute to get there. And I have now um, on a shared screen my um, Okay, so it sounds like you guys can hear me now. Perfect. So what happened when I went to share my Facebook page, my audio um, stopped and I think it was competing with what's going on on Facebook. So I apologize for that. But if you are on your business page or you want to go to it later, at the top of your business page where it has home and then whatever else you have um, allocated space for, it might be events or services or about, there is a more option, and if you click on that, a menu will pull up, and you're gonna choose community off of that menu. And when you do that, it's gonna pull at the very top of that who your top fans are of your Facebook page. And I mention this because Roanoke is still very active on Facebook, and it's where so many of you have grown your businesses. So I just wanted to share that little tidbit. If you wanna see who some of your top fans are right now, that's a great way to do it. I wish I could show you mine. Um, I know that the folks wouldn't mind, but if you want to do that and if, if you can't figure that out or it's not working for you, feel free to touch base with me on email and I'd be glad to hop on a call and walk you through it because um, that's a lot of fun to see. But let's get back to the presentation. We're going to talk about casual to active and what we want to do here is, is move them from curious right? So whether they're walking customers or online, they're not just curious, but they are followers and they want to see what you have to say, do, 
you know, what you're doing, whether it's retail or online, they want to pay attention to it. And these are the kind of folks that create an amazing opportunity for you to create moments for them. I like to call them moments, like micro moments that make them say, oh, that's different. And I like it. Like, that's the cool part is, oh, that's cool. I want to see more of what they have. Now, here's the key part, guys. This is so incredibly important. You got to use their language. And this is the hard part. And so a lot of you guys, including myself with what I do at the Small Business Development Center, I am deep in the weeds, meaning you guys know your stuff. You're technical experts at it. You know it. The problem sometimes that that creates is that we lose sight of the language that people use that don't know it, that aren't in the weeds, that aren't in it every day. And I can tell you a good example of this. Recently, a lot of the financial aid that's been available for small businesses during COVID-19 has specified that sole proprietors can take advantage of it. Now, I don't know about you guys on this call, but that word is like, what's a sole proprietor? What is that? And to us and to me and my team, we speak that language every day. We know exactly what it is. We see it all the time. We're talking economic development all the time. We know what that word is and we use it a lot. We quickly realized that, wait a minute, if you're a sole proprietor, the only time you see that word is when you register your business with the state of Virginia and get your local business license. You probably never see it again, unless you're just in the entrepreneurial world or small business world. And it was this big aha moment because we kept getting calls or emails from sole proprietors. Like they didn't know they were that, but they owned their business. It was just them. I'm like, Hey, do I qualify? And they just didn't, that word is just not part of their language. So it's a great learning for us. And I want to encourage you to do the same. You've got to use the language of your clients if you want to create those micro moments, because, because if you think you know what you're talking about or it makes sense to you, it just very well, you might not be using the right words. Another great example I have is a client who um, sells old audio cables. Um, you know, maybe you have an old DVD recorder or something that you need a cable for and you can't find it in the store. This person sells them and it's amazing. He's got all kinds of stuff. But a lot of his SEO was around model numbers and his language was very technical around audio language. Now, I'm probably his customer, meaning like I do have this old like camcorder that I have um, tapes for that I would love to figure out what's on them. And I, I don't necessarily want to send them off and go through that whole process. I really just need a charging cord. That's all I need. But to look for that, I'm going to be searching for, you know, camcorder charging cord or something very, you know, simple. And if I search that, I couldn't find, he wouldn't come up at all. This business wouldn't come up at all. So it was this kind of neat way of going through the process of what's the customer's language and really learning that. So in that, we're going to talk about social listening. We're going to talk about breaking the ice, quick wins, storytelling, and returning handshakes, or in this environment, elbow bumps. So we're going to talk about those um, and get you guys some to do so that you can walk away feeling like, okay, I got this, got some stuff going here. So let's talk about social listening and what is it? It's really an opportunity for you to listen out there in the world to your clients. And if you have a restaurant or a retail shop and you've got people publicly with you, just eavesdropping, right? And listening to their language or even your friend's language, talking about a subject matter that relates to your business. But you want to know what your customer's problems are and know how they describe them. And the way that you can do that outside of just listening is joining groups. Okay. You can use Facebook for that. Find groups that are industry specific. And I don't mean people like you who do what you do, but customers who are looking for stuff or that have shared interest as well as LinkedIn. And I want to encourage you if you do this, there's lots of pages out there like it. Don't sell to them. Don't do an ad and post it. 
don't do it. That's not what the group is for. And although you'll see everybody else doing it, that's not what you're there for. What you're there for is to listen for what questions people are asking. And if you want to grab a pencil or a way to take this down, I want to share a couple um, kind of helpful things that you can do. If you're on Facebook, um, in a Facebook group, and you can do this in LinkedIn groups too, if you do the search within there, type in quotes some of these phrases and see if, or see what comes up for you. And here's a couple. Why is it? When can I? What are the? What is the? How come I? You could also search need help or please help or I need help or I need help with. Those are just some things that you can quickly search and there's great business groups. You know, Roanoke Business Group is out there. There's an NRV one, um, all kinds of business groups out there where people are like asking for this kind of stuff. Like you'll see them ask for all types of things and that's what you want to be listening for. And you don't have to watch it day in and day out. You could just, you know, put it on your calendar as something that you do once a week. You go in and you do the searches and it'll pull up anytime those things have been said and you'll just kind of see what are people asking about. So it's really cool who, for people who are in specific industries and not just general business because you can get really specific. But just a little tidbit that I love to do and I love to share because it helps tremendously find language that your customers are using so that you can use that language. And what happens when you do that? Like when you use someone else's language instead of your own, a customer or a client or a follower is going to feel like, wait a minute, they get me. They understand. How did they know that? You know, how did they, how did they, did they overhear me saying something? And that's what you want them to feel. That's a connection that you've made with them. The other thing that you can do, if you already have an audience or a customer list or a client base, you can just ask them. And the way that I love to do this is just to say, hey, describe your biggest challenge related to X, Y, Z, you fill in the blank, whatever's important to you or that you're wanting or curious to know about, just ask. And what you're, what you're looking for isn't necessarily something to solve for them. You're looking for the language that they use to describe it. Okay. That's the key here. So I know a lot of you guys are like, do you get stuff done and everything has to have a to do behind it. But for this, it's just listening. You're just trying to find the words and listen to the descriptions that they're giving. And then of course, lastly, converse with people. The more you kind of eavesdrop and converse and have conversations and listen specifically for their wording, their wording, um, you're going to be able to turn that around and use it and be far more connected to your audience and your customers. Any questions so far? Here's an example, or here's a good question. Could you provide examples related to a tea shop and what kind of questions or problems can people express? Absolutely, let's think through this. And if anybody has an idea or a suggestion for Sean, post up, because it's really fun to see what you all, you all think too. Um, but I could see, so if I'm getting tea and I don't know exactly a lot about your shop, if I'm coming in to stay for that, or I'm just kind of coming in quick, but let's take my lifestyle, for example, I'm going to be a customer just because I do love tea. Um, it's rare that I get to actually sit down in a place and enjoy it. And so what I'm doing, if I had a challenge based on this, I'd be like, I, um, I love the convenience of the big um, kind of chain stores, let's say like a Starbucks, for example, because they have a drive through or I can just like order on an app and quickly go in and pick it up. I don't have to do the waiting and I just, it makes it a lot easier for me to stop in, but I really want to give my business to small businesses, to small shops. I don't want to shop the big chains. I want to shop local and I want to get my tea local. So that's really the biggest challenge I have. It's like how I don't have time to come in and wait. I know you're probably thinking that's crazy. It's just a couple minutes. But when I'm like, you know, driving to somewhere to get something real quick and I just want a cup of tea, I want to pop in and pop out super fast. And I don't want to have a lot of interaction in the process. And so that would be something that I would describe to you. And I'm probably thinking this makes no sense to this person because I'm not speaking their language. But that's what you want. You want someone to describe something that 
you know, and feel comfortable just kind of saying what their challenge is. Um, and so that could be something that you ask about as a challenge. And then for Facebook groups, I would just imagine like there's got to be like, you know, tea lovers or, um, you know, people who like tea or into that or kind of groups that do that. And I would be paying attention to those as well, because then you're mentioning that you're online. So I don't know who your customer base is, but I'd imagine that there are people who do search out really good tea um, and are looking for that. And I would encourage you guys to enjoy, join groups like that. And that's kind of a a fairly simple one because you have a product, a very specific product. It's not broad in general. So I love that. If you guys will, as I um, keep going, make sure that you're conversing over in chat with the folks answering questions. I'd love to see what you guys have to say too. And so another question that came up is how do you not put the customer on the spot? That is such um, a great question because I hear it all the time and I used to feel it. Um, and for those of you guys who may not know, I've had seven businesses and three of them were public facing, brick and mortar, you know, public coming in and purchasing either service or products. And so I know exactly where you're coming from. Um, and so how do you not put them on a spot? You're not, but you also want to do, that's just a simple answer, right? You're not putting it on the spot. You, you want to do a little bit of your own kind of social acuity, right? Like, is it, if you're in person with them, is it someone that looks approachable? And we're going to talk in a little bit how to break the ice, right, to get this conversation or get any conversation going. Um, but you do want to do a little, there's, there's people that are going to walk in and I'm going to interact with that I know they're not the right people to ask. That's, you know, like if I'm running in and out for my tea, you're not going to ask me a question because I'm in a hurry, right? Because you're going to put me on the spot if you do that to me. But if you're having a conversation with someone or you know it's someone who's like trying to engage with you, you're not going to be putting them on the spot for answering. But another great place to do this is online on your social media pages. It's just to ask because you'll get comments and they're really fun to kind of engage with and watch. Um, you could do a quick video that you post on social media that says, hey, um, you know, guys, I'm, I want to try something new. What do you think about this? Or can you tell me what your biggest challenge related to whatever it is that you're doing? And kind of do it in a fun little video, quick, super quick, just a few seconds and post it and get people to respond to you. And then lastly, if you do a newsletter or you have an email list, having an open-ended question like that is a really fun way to kind of hear back from your base. And we're not talking about hundreds of replies. You just need a few. And those are just some great ways that you can not put people on spot, but start to engage them. You're going to realize after you go through this process and start kind of implementing some of these tricks, people want to engage with you. They absolutely do. You just got to figure out which ones, you know, who are they and how do you um, get to where they are. Okay, so let's see. Let's go on to break the ice. I love the conversation going on over here. You guys keep that up. So with break the ice, you want to build relationships through connected moments, moments that you connect with people. And I call this association of appreciation. Do I have anyone on here from the retail industry? If I do, just kind of raise your hand or pop up and chat and say, yep. Um, and if not, it's okay. You might understand this concept too, but it's called association of appreciation. And when you are doing any kind of sales, right, and especially in person, but even virtual, um, so not so much by email, but some way that you're conversing with someone, you always start with some sort of connection. And that might be a compliment to the person. So in retail, if let's say I'm in a clothing retail store, the first thing that I'm going to do is when someone walks in my door, I'm going to scan them <laughs> from top to bottom and not in a judgmental way. I'm looking for what can I compliment them on that's related to fashion or clothing or jewelry or whatever. And I'm going to compliment them. Oh my gosh, I love that color on you. And then I'm going to like, if they don't immediately engage with me, I'm going to walk away and leave them alone. But it was that invitation to engage in just a moment of appreciation and then it just kind of makes them like you know you'll see their shoulders perk up and a little grin on their face because you've connected with them we all love connection and that's a really important part now if you're on online sales 
Um, you can't, if, if you're just doing online, you're just, particularly if you're selling product, if you're selling services, you can do it. Product's a little bit harder, but I really encourage you to be, get creative here and figure out how you can do that. But the to big to do that I have for you guys with breaking the ice, people aren't going to engage with you if they see you as a company or a corporation. And I want to tell you that the trend, you know, five to 10 years ago was that even small businesses, even one, one man shops wanted to present themselves as bigger than life businesses. And that was really popular and it worked for a period of time. But I want to tell you guys now it's not working. People really enjoy local. They appreciate it and they want to know who's behind it. And they want to connect with you as a person, not just with your business. And so I'm going to challenge you guys as your first to do from this is to on social media, if you have social media accounts, if you don't, if you have some sort of email list, I want you to share something on your business page or account or email list that is about you or your life. I can just, I, you guys are probably like, no, everybody has their video turned off. God bless you guys. But I know what you're doing behind the screen. <laughs> you're rolling your eyes and thinking, no way. No way am I doing that. But guys, I'm telling you, it's so critical. People want to connect with you. And I hope that you want to connect with your, with your audience. And I don't want you to get caught up in, oh my gosh, I have 2,000 people watching this. Trust me, they are not all watching. Your stuff gets in front of very few people, and it's probably the people that have interacted with you or seen a lot of your stuff. So you, you're in company of friends. So don't be too um, crazy about it or get in your head about it. You just want to share a little something um, with your audience. And a couple of things that you can think about to do this is what would you share with a friend? Like, did, did you read a good book recently that you'd share? It doesn't have to have anything to do with what you do in your business, but did you read a good book? Did you learn about a fun new game? Did you eat at a new restaurant or try a new food that you can share? You don't want to do this every day of the week, but just every once in a while, you know, maybe twice a month, you want to share something about you or your life with your audience. Even if you are a bigger company, you've got 10 employees, you have another business partner. It doesn't matter how small or big you want to share something personal. So I want you guys to do that. Please write that down. That's your number one task. We've got a bunch of these, but this is your first one. Do that this week. Do it, do it, do it. Okay. So I want to just mention um, personal story. Good. There's a little chat going on here. I was thinking about adding an about me section to my site, but I'm a pretty private person. What type of information would you recommend sharing in an about me that's not too personal? That's a great question. So um, let me give you just a couple examples. One, I would just make a list of like, what are some things that people can relate to, right? Like what, what do you do and, and does that correlate with some, some likes or things that people are interested in that would do business with you? And kind of make a list of those and maybe build those out for your About Me page. I would also share, now I am not a wordsmith by any mean. I'm not an English major. I am... You know, I'm not the one you want writing your website, but if you guys want to check out an example, you can go over to LinkedIn and look for me on LinkedIn as Amanda Forrester. My last name is spelled with two R's, F-O-R-R-E-S-T-E-R. -E and you're welcome to read my embarrass embarrassingly outdated profile <laughs> that is up there. It's, I need to change it. It still looks like I'm looking for a job. I am not, but one a lot of the feedback that I've gotten on it is that's a great way to be personal without being too personal. And so feel free to go read that. That might inspire you a little bit to do your own. And then as you get started on that, if you ever wanted to share it with me at the beginning of the chat, I shared my email address. I'd be glad to look at it with you. Um, and we could kind of massage it a little bit so that you're comfortable with it, but it shares a little bit of your personal um, story. And you guys keep giving advice on that. Um, for those of you guys that are in the chat, I'm going to move on to quick wins because um, I want to get through these other to-dos here for you. So you want to give people a quick win. You want to change their day. 
You're not always going to know if you're doing this, but that is your moment or thought and opportunity. So today when we started this workshop, um, although it was a massive fail on my part that I couldn't share my Facebook page with you to show you how to find your top fans on Facebook, I was able to share that little tidbit with you so that you could feel like and have something to walk away with today. Like, okay, that's cool. I didn't know about that. That's um, love that. Just had a little, I call them little nuggets. And that's what you want to think about doing for people. And not everyone on here today maybe found value in that and that's okay too. You're just trying to share little quick wins um, that they can benefit from. Now, how do you find those or how do you get inspired? So here's my super duper secret for you. Don't tell anybody this. No, I'm just kidding. You can tell everybody because it's so helpful. You don't have to come up with this stuff on your own. You are, we are not like in a closet trying to create our own stuff without bringing people in. We, we want to like collaborate with people. And so one way that I love for people to do this and get inspired is, you know, your favorite business books or go to the library and look at books about topics that your, your business is related to, or just general business books or anything, you know, anything that inspires you or you think would relate to your audience well. And look at the table of contents and the titles of the chapters in the book and see if you can pull out some inspiration because what they've done all the work for you, right? They've written this book and they've gone through and said, what are the key things that people can kind of take a quick glance and understand what they're going to learn? And they put it in the table of contents and you can use that. You're not copying it. Please don't copy it. Um, but just use it as inspiration for kind of nuggets that you can put together for your customers and your audience. So your task right here is in the next couple of weeks, I want you to create three social media posts or emails if you are an email list business that give people a quick win. So figure out what a few of those quick wins might be and create three. And then, guys, don't spend a lot of time on this. This is super simple. If it's a quick win, it means it's super quick information, right? You're not writing a paragraph. It's going to be in bullet point form or just one little tidbit or nugget that you're going to give people. And I want you to do three of those. Um, and so someone said, can you give me a quick win via email or post? So I think this is... The tea shop, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's think about quick win. I'm 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 embarrassingly not very knowledgeable on tea, although I love it. Now you're like making me super curious, and you're gonna have to post up the link to your website for all of us to see, so we can check it out. So do that. Um, but let's say an email. Um, you know what? I, I don't know how to brew tea, quite frankly, like super good. All I know is you put you pour hot water over a tea bag. I don't know. That's all I know. But what if you could give me a super quick tip, and I don't know what kind of tea you sell, but let's just pretend that you sell really nice, like those, um, oh, I'm, I don't even know the language. The little, ch here, you, get, you get to do some social listening right here. Those little, the, the chunks, the actual tea that's not ground up really fine. It's like bigger leaves and it's kind of like, looks like potpourri. I don't know. That's what it looks like to me. Loose leaf tea. Great. Thank you. But see, I'm not going to call it loose leaf tea because I don't know that word. There's your social listening. And I, is that a better way to make my, is that what I should be looking for? And if so, do I boil my water and then pour it over the tea or... Um, can I just like put hot tea in a mug in the microwave and then put my bag in? Like, I don't know. So maybe you could give me like, Hey, if you want to enjoy a really good cup of tea this weekend, you said steep. I don't, someone said steep. I don't know what steep means. Oh my gosh. So you guys are teaching me so much. I'm going to look this up, but you could give me a super quick win of like this weekend, if you want a nice cup of tea, do these three things, right? You can guide me through that process. Ideally, I'd have to buy something from you to do it. That would be cool. That's a good win for you. But just super simple things that you think are just like, duh, of course. I know how to, everyone knows how to do that because in reality, most people don't know how to do it. So think about those kind of things as quick wins. 
And I have to be honest, I'm the worst at this. I know that at the Small Business Development Center, I probably have a hundred things that I could share with you today that would be super helpful. And I don't make the time to do that. And it's something that I'm working on. And I want to share more quick ones with you. So if you guys are following along with us on social media and you see me share one, like give me a high five, like keep me going, right? <laughs> Practicing what I preach here. Um, but that would be a quick win. Okay. So, oh, let me go back. I wanted to say one more thing that I think is important. Um, the reason that you do this, I get bad about getting excited about telling you like cool little things like this, but forgetting to tell you the reason behind it. It, if you give people a quick win, one, it starts to build trust. You're like, oh, they like that Sean is what they're talking about with the tea. I need to like, I need to follow along. Um, which by the way, if you'll, if you guys want, you know, not just Sean, but everybody that's on here, um, share your website address with us or your social media page or wherever you want us to follow along. And you know, everybody on here would be glad to do that. Um, but you, you also put people's fears at ease. Um, and get them excited to like do whatever it is that you're trying to get them to do. And I think a lot of you guys or all of you guys are entrepreneurs and have your business. That means you've got a pretty good portion of extrovert in you. You might not be extrovert. I'm an introvert. Um, a lot of people are like, no, you're not, but super, I really am. Um, and I need a little nudging to come into a store that I've never been in, quite frankly. Sometimes I'm in the mood and I'll just go in, but sometimes you got to build some trust with me. And I love it when people open their doors and share a little video of like what I can expect when they, when I'm going to go to their place, especially if it's like, I don't know what to do if there's steps of things to do. So it just puts people at ease builds trust and kind of makes you like the knowledge expert, right? Who they're going to turn to for information products or services. Okay. So on to the next thing here, storytelling. This is, I think a lot of this, um, you guys already know and are probably already doing. I think this is the most common thing that people kind of get and they do and they do it really well, but it's sharing, um, what, someone's life looks like or what their day might look like if they purchased from you, right? So if they bought a product or had an experience with you, what's the direct positive change for them? And you want to share that. And you can do that through testimonies um, from your clients or customer base or from transformations. And this, a lot of people think about fitness transformations. It doesn't have to be that. It could just be life before, life after my product or service. Um, including restaurants, right? Like, you know, meal boredom is a thing. And then they come and have this beautiful meal at your restaurant. And now they're like, just so excited. And they're with their partner and love is like, you know, spewing from them because they had this great meal. So it could be lots of different things. And I want to go back to someone asked, like, how do you not put someone on the spot? A lot of people are so uncomfortable with asking for testimonies. So um, I just want to, don't be shy. They're, you're going to ask for them and some people aren't going to respond and that's totally cool, but the ones that do are going to be really good. And here's a formula that I like to use if you guys want to write this down. You can just simply ask, hey, would you, what was life like before you XYZ, like found my product, purchased, you know, had a cup of my tea, <laughs> pop the tea leaves. Um, followed me on, if you're, you know, if you're a knowledge worker and you're sharing knowledge, followed my social media account. Like what, what was it before? And what about after? And then what would it look like if you hadn't engaged with me? And you can flip out some of those words for what makes sense for your business, but this is a great way to get a good solid testimony from someone. A lot of times if you say, Hey, would you give me a testimony? It just like blinds them. They don't know what to write. They don't know what to do. And it's like the last thing on their priority list. But if you ask very specific questions that then you can use those answers as testimonies, that's going to get you a lot further on both sides. Less work for them, better content for you. Now, you typically don't blindly do these. It's usually if someone like just seems excited, right? They seem excited about their engagement with you or buying your product or they've left a good review somewhere. Um, or they, you know, on Facebook or Google, you can do stars, right? But they might not have said anything. Those are the kind of people that you can reach out and ask very specific questions to and then turn around and use those as testimonies. 
So your job is to find a customer or a client and share a testimony. Okay, you can follow the formula or maybe you already have one, but I want you to do that. Okay, and what that does is create, again, builds trust, but also shows that and highlighting a client or customer, but showing that my product, service, whatever, um, is found valuable in the community. And that's really what you're sharing. Okay, so I've got another question here. What about if, if you want to sell a service or give simple health information, like drink more water, eat fiber, when a zillion people are doing it, how do you distinguish yourself? That's such a great question. Um, and I don't know what the size of your audience is. I am, my businesses are in the health and fitness industry that I've been in. So this is, I got you, I got you on this one. Okay. I know, um, where you're at there and there, the market is incredibly crowded, but the number one way you can distinguish yourself is follow some of these steps. And while everyone is sharing those tidbits, um, with people, they're not sharing them in your language, your voice and your visual you know, way, whether it's video or graphics or whatever, and you already probably have a following and that's who you're talking to. You got to remember, we're not using that old marketing funnel where we're trying to get all the traffic. We're trying to take the people who are already casual with us, who know about us, have heard about us and turn them into super fans. And that's what this is focused on. So if you think about it in that way, although there's a gazillion people telling you to drink more water, well, I need a gazillion more telling me to, right? Cause it's something that I'm, I got my little glass here and I'm taking two sips the whole time this presentation. So it's still information that's needed and it's needed in your way, your language and your way of doing it. And so I really want you to push and kind of figure out what that is for you and just keep doing it. And don't think about the zillions of other people doing it. You're only talking to your people, your people and not everybody else in this flipped marketing funnel that we're talking about. Okay, thanks for sharing some of these websites. That's awesome. You guys can scroll back through there and take note if, um, and, and follow along with these folks. That's really cool. Thank you guys. Okay, so the next little quick thing here is return every handshake, and this is your last to do. Now, I told you guys this stuff is overwhelming. We're only through the first part of this, so for this hour, okay? And so we're gonna go, go through this and then I'll tell you what's next, but return every handshake. Guys, I want you right now this is your to-do. I want you to pull up your calendar and I want you to put in a reoccurring event. Block it. Block a time. I don't care what day. I don't care what time it is. 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you've got. I want you to block it on your calendar and you're going to return every, I'm going to call it virtual handshake. And here's what that is. You're going to follow and engage. We're just going to talk about online right now. Okay. So pay attention to your social media accounts. Follow, engage with people who are commenting on your post, who have shared your post, who have tagged you, who have done anything at all to resemble some sort of connection, okay? Um, if anyone's on Instagram, a lot of people put stuff in their stories and they'll tag businesses. Pay attention to that, right? Like, Pay attention to what's happening online. If someone sends you a message on Facebook or Instagram or, or anything, any they just try to contact you, email, you are going to return every single one. I call them little handshakes. Okay, so that's the first thing you're going to do. Your task is just to put aside time, follow everyone that you can think of. What It might be clients. So if you have someone that um, comments on your social media stuff, maybe they've commented more than once, you might want to follow them right? And occasionally comment on their stuff and not selling them anything. You're just commenting, you know, giving them a high five. A lot of times I, you'll see me use emojis a lot because I'm just super quick doing it. And I just want to touch base with them. And I want them to know, I see, I see you, I see what you're doing. It's so cool, but I'm not going to write a paragraph. I'm going to do like an emoji high five or something like that. Just something to know that, Hey, that's cool. They're engaging with me or they're watching or they know. It'll make you feel more connected to your customers and clients and stakeholders. Um, and it'll also feel super good for them and start to drive them in direction of being a super fan. So for example, what would happen if you were at a networking event or you were at some kind of event and you walked up to someone and stuck out your hand and they didn't respond? 
and maybe that's happened to you. It certainly happened to me. <laughs> Well, what would you feel about that? It would feel kind of icky, right? Like weird and whatever. And so while that might not be the case on social media, it does kind of feel, especially if they've sent you a message or commented on a post and you don't say anything or like it or do something with it, it feels kind of weird. Um, so make sure that you're spending time doing that. It is, it is time consuming, but you can do it in 15 to 30 minutes a week. And I want you to do that. It'll take you um, just another step forward into that super fan kind of place. If you want to take it a step further, which I love this, if you're kind of already doing that, already watching that, you can keep track of the people who reach out and follow up with them later. So not only return the quick little handshake virtually, but follow up with them later. And there's a great, there's a couple of companies doing this really well. Um, Oh, Content Converter is one that's a business um, application that you can use. And there's a company called Chubbies. There's several of these that are doing this, but it's still kind of an outlier. And so if you guys were to do this, you would be one of those outliers, which is a good way to make super fans. But they send a quick pre-recorded video thanking people for following along. So if someone leaves a message on their social media or they send them like a message on Instagram or Facebook, they have an app that they use. I'll have to share that with you later. I don't have that in front of me. Um, see if I can find it real quick. If I do, I'll share it. If not, I'll have to share it later. Um, there are apps out there that you can do quick little videos like that, and then it allows you to type in an email address, and you can send it to them on email. Or if you're using social, those tools are right there available in Facebook or Instagram, and you can do it. But it's literally like – they'll be in the grocery store like shopping for their family and they see, you know, something come through and they'll just pop open their video real quick and say, Hey, I just want to reach out and say, hey, thanks for following along, engaging with us. If there's, you know, anything that we can be helpful with, let me know. Or sometimes they don't even say that. They just say, thanks for following along. And it's that personal video that they like saw you and you're taking time out of your day of whatever other things that you're doing to recognize that they engaged with you. There's, they're super fan right then. We don't even have to go to the next stage of this. This is like, you're already directly in super fan status. So that's just a little tip that if you um, can do that, like I said, in the beginning, this stuff is hard and time consuming, but if you do it, you're going to build your super fans. And so that's just a little nugget there that you could follow up and do that. Um, with. Okay. Look at that. People are getting into the renegrags.com. I love that. All right. So you hope you guys have that on your calendar. I really want you, you've got to have it on your calendar to do it. I just know that you got to get it on there and just make it a, an, a weekly thing that you do. And if you have other people working in your business, it's a great thing to assign to other people too. You can call it if you want to know the fancy word for it. It's called community management. It's a new marketing term and a new position that's out there and kind of made up in the world. It's called community management. And that's what it means that you're going in and you're engaging with everyone that engages with you in some way. Um, and so if you've got someone, you can give them the fancy new title and tell them what that is. And it's super important to your business. Okay. So it's one o'clock. We're going to end here. I do next Wednesday. We're going to cover the next part of this called active to connected. So we're going to take those five things that I gave you to do and you start building that, um, you know, making that funnel bigger because we flipped it upside down. We're going to go down the chain and we're going to start talking about your active um, customers and turn them into connected customers, which leads to directly to super fans. And so we're going to talk about belonging. Um, and I've got some other things up there. We don't, we're not going to get specific in those today, but I'm excited about this part. And again, if you can't join me next Wednesday, um, I'm going to pull up the registration here for you and share it. And if you can't join me, it's okay. I will make sure that you have the recording to that. This recording is not shared publicly, but I will make sure because you attended today that you get that um, next piece of it. It'll also be an hour long, um, but and a little more to do's, but a little bit faster. Today was the really guts of it and the longer kind of portion of it. I really want to thank you guys for um, following along today and kind of engaging with me on chat. It's so fun. Um, let's see. I'm going to.